succession and dear participants you can feel that uh, our uh, talk is getting more and more towards the practical aspect towards the pit milling quality control and <coughs> formulation aspect <coughs> and i'm sure dr bhosle's talk uh, who sat down with seriously with pen and paper they must have noted down a lot of things uh, now uh, let me introduce you to today's last talk uh, mr harjot singh uh, he is going to deliver his talk on financing the feed performance through quality premix uh, procedure and talking about him uh, mr harjot singh is now the business head of lark engineering company india private private limited with more than 12 years of professional experience in feed industry uh, providing innovative solutions to feed millers to achieve maximum efficiency from machines with best quality in most economic way and to make them aware regarding the process parameters safety and hygiene practices earlier he was commenting on a conversation i'm sure he unfortunately he got disconnected during that con during his talk and i would like to um, continue with his comment on the con uh, conversation uh, dr harjot singh sorry mr harjot singh now the floor is yours uh, you may proceed ahead with your comment and then your presentation thank you uh, vivek ji and uh, i would like to thank all wet nepal team uh, to invite us for this uh, uh, discussion on the technical um, topics in feed milling and the premix uh, process uh, namaste and uh, especially satsri kal to omkar ji respected omkar ji and all of the members of this uh, satsri kal satsri kal satsri kal ji 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 uh before starting actually uh, i would like to introduce my company our company is lark engineering company india and we are into the feed machines manufacturing in poultry cattle and aqua feed and uh, we are into this market since 1994 and uh, uh, today i got the opportunity from wet nepal team to have my views over the uh, topic that is quality premix procedures to enhance the feed mill performance before starting my discussion uh, i would like to uh, give my views over the previous conversation that but unfortunately due to the <clears throat> poor connection uh, i would not be able to explain uh, previously we uh, were discussing regarding the hammer mill and the uh, roller mill applications we, we our company did a small study uh, that uh, uh, where the particle size distribution is very important for example in the breweries and the eth ethanol uh, extraction projects where there is we have to control the enzyme dosing and we have to extract the maximum uh, ethanol by the fermentation process we have to control the dust that uh, there is limitation uh, we we have to limit the fines below 300 microns the all particle size should be above 300 microns and uh, there is there is a very less limit of the particle size distribution like in feed industry uh, we have a range of around 600 700 800 900 microns we we have a deviation of the particle size in the hammer mill and we can uh, allow this deviation in the feed mill process but we are in in those application where we have to reduce the dust uh, we have to minimize the fines uh, we basically prefer uh, roller mill over hammer mill because uh, the roller mill prevents the dust formation and give very uniformity in particle size and uh, best suited for the application with a single product like uh, in ethanol or breweries the product is only single like the broken rice or the maize or the sorghum 
uh, and uh, as there is a um, in roller mill there are flutes helical angle over the rollers like uh, uh, angled at 10 11 or 12 degree uh, helix with the 10 to 12 teeth per inch uh, with respect to the application and the uh, grinding required so uh, where in in the field industry there is a wide range of the particles in raw material from millet to uh, maize with very fine DORB and soya DOC. There is wide variation in the particle size of the raw material. Uh, hammer mill gives appropriate result in even in adverse conditions with uh, maximum moisture variation with maximum particle size variation no doubt the running cost of the roller mill is very less as compared to the hammer mill but uh, that we have to select over the application and the selection of the field ingredients uh, i just want to add this thing in that conversation sir uh, am i audible sir yeah, yeah, very, very, yes, very yes. much, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, let, let me start uh, with my uh, presentation. I am going to share the screen. Um, uh, sir, is the, the screen is visible? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, sir, I split my presentation into two parts. Uh, one is with respect to the technology and the uh, machine where we discuss about the different type of mixer uh, that we can use in uh, premix uh, to make the premix or to make the feed and then the second part is the key checkpoints with respect to the process and procedure for example in machine and technology uh, we will cover uh, the uh, this is the comp uh, a brief outline of the index that we have a, a small discussion in this presentation like in machine technology, the different type of mixers are uh, double shaft pedal mixer, double ribbon pedal mixer, and single shaft pedal mixer, and uh, conical blenders as per the application and as per the requirement we will discuss in detail. Then we will discuss about uh, how to select a micro mixer uh, for a feed mill. That is a very important uh, criteria, uh, like uh, a small uh, a small field, uh, farmer or having a very little uh, requirement of a premix, if he uses a big batch mixer, he may uh, underfill the mixer uh, uh, and can get um, uh, poor uh, mixing. And if a big feed miller uses a small mix, batch mixer and uh, overfill the mixer as per the batch requirement, there is also uh, not good mixing then how we can select a perfect uh, batch mixer for our field mills. Then we will discuss about how to check the mixer efficiency and what is the coefficient of variation and uh, how we can compare the different mixing efficiencies of the different variants of the mixer. Then we will discuss the key checkpoints, the process and procedure, uh, like uh, what will be the optimum filling level of the uh, mixer to achieve a maximum uh, efficiency or to achieve a minimum CV. Then use of carrier and base material in the premix to make the complete batch. Uh, then there is very important uh, point like dry and wet mixing cycle. As uh, dry uh, particles are free to move with respect to the turbulence and the mixer uh, force. But uh, the wet particles are not so much uh, in the free movement in the mixing process. So we have to take care of the dry and the wet mixing cycle that we will discuss in detail. Then the interlocking sequence to avoid the underdose and overdose of the premix in the feed mills. And uh, the one new thing uh, we introduce in the premix process that uh, uh, we must ensure that the bag prepared for the pre-starters must go in the pre-starter bag. So how we can avoid the cross contamination that the pre-starter uh, mix premix uh, not goes to the finisher or the starters we we can avoid with that uh, plc controlled barcode scanners very very low in cost and very cost effective uh, thing then how we can ensure that uh, the premix that we made in the uh, mixers 
the actual amount of the way that required is uh, the technician and the operator putting in the feed mixer for that we can uh, discuss over the load cells and the tolerance uh, of the weight in that uh, mixing process then other one is the how we can select the appropriate batch for a better material weighing practices uh, with respect to the fraction and the ratios uh, the other one is the mixer cleaning that is very important part because the residues in the mixer uh, may create the dead spots uh, in that uh, mixing process and also the one thing we i want to add the sequence of the uh, ingredients uh, like when we, uh, during the pre mix process when we have to put uh, medicines the trace minerals and when we have to put the base material or the carrier so that we can have a better mixing efficiency then with respect to the machine and technology uh, what we have to check during the mixing process the clearance between the mixer ribbon and drum as there is a 8 to 10 mm uh, clearance between the mixer ribbon and the drum so we have to monitor regularly the clearance so that even the last 10 mm layer of the premix is homogeneous in uh, nature then to check the dead corners of the ribbon shaft and the drum uh, then the other the very important part is the pockets at the discharge the, the pockets uh, at the discharge uh, in the mixer uh, obstruct the movement of the particles uh, the particles layer uh, near to the discharge gate so we have to avoid the pockets to get the homogeneous mixing then the next is the double gate mechanism uh, to avoid the spillage of the medicines due to the back air pressure of the mixer while charging to the medicine hopper then the other then the, the, the last one is the variable pitch or small screw uh, dosing uh, feeders for the dosing in the if we have to put the medicines in the auto mode for example uh, we have to avoid the manual dosing and we have to put all the medicines in the uh, mixer uh, with the PLC control automatic system. So this is the brief overview of the presentation. Uh, let me start with the um, mixing process that uh, actually the as we all know feed is generally considered to be the major input of the livestock and may account for the 70 to 80 percent of the um, production cost so if we can produce high quality feed in, in economical way it will not only cut the cost of uh, production but also yields high profit uh, in tomorrow's presentation we will discuss we discuss regarding the complete process and the process parameters of the batching grinding mixing conditioning palleting crumbling screening but today we mainly focus over the uh, mixing process this is the general uh, flow chart of uh, the feed mill process for example the raw material then cleaning uh, to remove the cobs stone uh, jutes then the batching process uh, after batching we have to reduce the particle size in the grinding process then comes the mixing process uh, where we add the vitamins minerals oils all things so uh, uh, today i'll just focus on this uh, mixing and the premix process So in uh, as there are many types of mixer like double ribbon, uh, double shaft, single shaft, uh, vertical mixers and conical blenders. We, I mainly discuss regarding the two designs. The one is the uh, ribbon mixer, double ribbon mixer and the other is that uh, double shaft mixer. In uh, double ribbon mixer, uh, this is a U-shaped mixer. You can see. Uh, Uh, this is a demo. Uh, we we put sawdust colored sawdust with four colors and uh, divide the layers into the 25% of each color, the red, green, blue, and yellow. And then we start the mixing process. You can see in, in double ribbon mixer, one ribbon pushes the material from left to right and the other, other uh, ribbon uh, pushes the material from right to left. And uh, like this, uh, in this process, uh, we can get a homogeneous feed. This is a process of a, a double ribbon a screw mixer. Uh, 
then in double shaft mixer this is a demo of a double shaft mixer uh, what we um, uh, did th this demo we did around 3 years back uh, we we took 1 kg of colored rice and uh, put into the 100 kg of white normal rice in that mixer then we start run the mixer and you can see this is after 2 seconds after 3 seconds 5 seconds and 7 seconds so this is a, the homogeneous of homogeneity of the uh, dispersion of the particles uh, double ribbon is equally good um, uh, as the double shaft the only main difference is uh, in double ribbon mixer the mixing time is around 5 to 6 minutes and the cv that we cv we can achieve around less than 5 uh in pre mix addition and less than 7 in direct 25 grams addition of the uh, trace minerals or the pre mix in double shot pedal mixer the mixing time is only 60 to 180 seconds like 2 to 3 minutes and uh, cv we can achieve less than 3 and the main advantage of double shot mixer is if if there is if there is a variation in uh, particle size and it is there is variation in the density of the material uh, double shaft mixer is best uh, suited for that application uh, even for the um, variable variable particle size variable density we can have a, a good mixing in the double shaft mixers and then the other mixers are the conical drum mixer the vertical mixer the um, pedal mixers these are the other, other mixers like in conical drum mixer the drum uh, moves Uh, and the um, mainly the material mixes through the gravitational forces but that is only suited for the particles having uh, equal uh, size and the equal density if if there is a particle size variation and the density variation then due to the gravitational forces the heavy particle will settle down uh, early and the light particle there may be uh, variation in the um, uh, mixing process in the conical blenders if there is a wide uh, variation in the density and the particle size so we we have to check the application the particle size the density uh, before selecting the mixer then the uh, the next is the how we can select a micro mixer for a feed mill let us assume a feed mill producing 150 metric ton of uh, feed and uh, its pre mix requirement is around uh, 3% so 150 into 3% is around 4.5 metric ton per day uh, generally the feed millers have a manual pre mixer uh, that means uh, they weigh all the uh, items the ingredients the vitamin trace minerals all other things manually put into the mixer from the top manually and back from the gate manually so that mostly mostly a 70 to 80% of the feed mills have the manual process only the big feed millers or having a uh, commercial premix uh, suppliers like uh, avitech newtech and all other premix companies and the feed millers having uh, seven or eight feed mills and uh, have a centralized uh, premix plant in a, a location they also have a automatic projects Uh, but uh, in the manual operation what we calculate we calculate that uh, uh, ideally uh, the operator or the technicians the labor may take uh, around 8 to 10 minutes uh, to charge the mixer manually they have to um, uh, go to the floor from by the ladder and put into the mixer i am not calculate calculating the weighing time Uh, weighing team maybe uh, we have to assume the a separate team so if we assume the 10 minutes uh, filling time and 6 minutes mixing time uh, that depends upon the mixer design uh, some mixer have 3 minute mixing time so have a 10 minutes i am assuming 6 minute mixing times and 6 to 7 minutes uh, manual bag filling time 
plus three minutes extra buffer time. So total batch time is approximate 30 minutes. So uh, we can produce, uh, if, if I have a 500 kilogram mixer, uh, we can produce uh, uh, one ton uh, premix in one hour. So for a 150 ton uh, feed mill having requirement of 3% uh, premix, uh, we can e easily produce a premix of two days in eight running hours with a 500 kilogram mixer. Even from the small feed requirement, for example, 50 ton, 40 ton feed mill, uh, there are different sizes like uh, uh, 50 kg mixer, 100 kg mixer, 300 kg mixer. Uh, there are different uh, variants of the feed mixer. And one thing more, few feed millers are practicing two pre-mixers. One is pre-pre-mixer of 50 kg for the costly medicines and the trace minerals. And the second, a pre-mixer uh, of 500 or 300 kilograms, what they do, they make a premix for the uh, big pre-mixer. For example, the costly medicines and the medicine having very less in uh, quantity, for example, 40 grams, 50 grams, 30 grams, they make a separate premix and then come put the complete bag into the premixer, then uh, that premix they put into the feed mixer, in the feed mills. So uh, that is the general practice um, a few feed millers uh, are using uh, to uh, get the mixing efficiency and uh, to utilize the medicines, the costly medicines uh, to maximum extent in the uh, feed. Then uh, this is the selection of micro mixer for the feed millers. Then there is a selection of the uh, premix project for the premix suppliers. That is a um, big topic we can discuss separately because it is the totally uh, machinery related, the automatic bins, the premix dosing, the auto dosing liquids, and the automatic bagging machines. And even uh, in automatic bagging machines, uh, uh, we have a provision to check the way uh, tolerances, all, all other things, that, that is the totally uh, machine related part. Then we come to the uh, how we can check a mixer efficiency the, and what is the CV. For example, uh, uh, in a double ribbon mixer, I said that the CV is less than seven or less than five. In double sharp mixer, the CV is less than three. But how we can check the CV of our mixer in our feed mill? Uh, each feed miller, each premix supplier can uh, check the efficiency of uh, their machines. Uh, what we have to do, uh, one method is a salt analysis and the other method is the micro tracers. I discuss about the micro tracers. Uh, what, is, what are mic micro tracers are uh, color coated iron particles. Uh, what we have to do in 100 kilogram, uh, oh, in 1000 kilogram batch mixer, we generally add 25 grams of micro tracers. Then we mix the whole batch for five to six minutes. Then after the mixing process, uh, we collect uh, samples from different locations. And from those locations, from those samples, we separate 100 grams because every average diet of a bird is 100 grams. We have to check that in that 100 grams is there is the presence of each and every nutrient, every ingredient, every oil that we put into the mixer. We have to check in that 100 grams. So we separate the 10 100 gram samples. We put the 10 samples into 10 jars and we put a filter paper above the jars and magnet behind the filter paper. We shake the jars for 10 to 15 minutes. All the iron particles that recovered from the samples, they stick to the filter paper. Uh, the micro tracer particles are very difficult to count with the naked eyes. We have to, then we have to put a uh, ethyl alcohol or any spirit so that the they leaves the red color over the filter paper like this. This is the micro tracer. And uh, when we collect the samples, there are the, uh, the like these spots on the every sample. And what we do,
like uh, from the 100 gram samples, uh, we count 45 spores from the first sample, uh, like uh, 40 counts from the second sample, 42 counts from the third sample, 40 and uh, like respectively from these nine or 10 samples, we count the different uh, uh, micro tracer count. Then we uh, sum all these figures and divide by the number of samples, we get the mean. We have to put the mean into this formula. X1 is the like uh, first count is 45. This is 45 and the mean of all these nine uh, readings will be around 42.44. So when we put this in this formula, this is 45 minus 42.44 square plus second reading minus mean square like this for all nine readings, we, we get the standard deviation. Then we divide the standard deviation with the mean, we get the coefficient of variation like this is the report of the mixer that we in uh, did in March 2014 for mixer testing. We collect all these samples, we count the, these uh, nine readings and uh, we get the standard deviation of 2.96 and coefficient of variation 6.9. We can also um, uh, have a ready formula like this Excel sheet. We can add all the readings in this Excel sheet and automatically uh, with the help of the formulas, we get the coefficient of variation. So this is very simple method uh, to check uh, the coefficient of variation at, at our own uh, feed mill. Uh, we can also provide the micro tracers um, uh, complete guideline and uh, we can also do the feed mill audits to check the um, efficiency of the uh, mixing efficiency of the machines. Then we come to the next part. The next part is the key checkpoints for a better premix practices. The number one is the filling level. This is a view of uh, two mixers. Uh, always ask your supplier uh, that what is the supplier of the machine. Always ask your machine supplier that what is the minimum and the maximum level we have to maintain for ideal mixing. Uh, let us say we. This is a, a ribbon mixer uh, side view. For uh, this, we have to maintain minimum 40 to 45 percent uh, of level and maximum up to this 80 percent level. So if we overfill the mixer up to the maximum level, uh, we can't get good mixing. The top layer of this has the minimum turbulence and mainly floats over the surface. So we get the poor mixing if we overfill the mixer. Same in case of the uh, uh, minimum level. If, if we uh, fill the mixer below the minimum level, there is not appropriate weight of the feed particles to the last layer and last layer layer on as as discussed earlier there is around 10 mm gap between the mixer drum and ribbon and that layer at that 10 mm only moves due to the weight of the above material and cohesion between the and cohesion and the uh, friction between the particles. So if the filling level is very less, there is very less movement at the last layer and you do not get the homogeneous feed in that last layer and uh, the element of the or uh, medicine or mineral present in that last layer or that we add firstly in the batch there may be the missing uh, issues if we uh, underfill the uh, mixer to the uh, below the minimum level. So we have to ask our supplier that what is the ideal uh, filling level of the mixer uh, so that we can have a good mixing. Then the second is the use of base material. For example, uh, we have a 500 kilogram of mixer, but our, we have a premix requirement of only 200 kilograms for that day and we want to produce premix for that day only because next day we have to run the sep separate recipe. We have a schedule of that uh, 200 kilograms of the premix required. So how we cop up with that uh, 
situation uh, we what we have to do we have to add base material or carrier like the grounded maize uh, rice bran uh, and ask we have to ask our nutritionist that what base base material best suited for this recipe because there is a specific uh, properties of the base material and uh, uh, requirement in that premix uh, so we have to ask our nutritionist that uh, uh, in this batch if i have to make uh, 500 kg uh, or 400 kg uh, Uh, premix, but I have only 200 kilograms of the trace uh, uh, premix or the minerals, which base material I have to add so that I can get a uh, proper mixing. Uh, so we have to use the base material to complete that batch. And the third important point is the material sequence. For example, uh, the mixer uh, have dead corners or dead spots like. in like uh, this this one this is a photo of a uncleaned mixer uh there are the dead spots if we put small for example uh we have to add uh, in in uh, uh, to 500 kg uh, uh, batch of a pre mix there is any medicine which is only 440 grams or 60 grams uh if we put that medicine in initially to that mixer in the empty mixer the medicine may stuck to this these dead corners so what we have to do we have to fill the mixer firstly with the base material or the macro elements that is more in formulation and uh, with the decreasing order the uh, trace minerals and the small quantity medicine lastly to the batch so that there is not any uh, dead spot and uh, uh, the medicines or the trace minerals not get stick to that uh, mixer even or the shaft or the dead corners present in the mix so that is a very important uh, po point to be taken in care uh, regarding the material sequence in the other other point is the dry and uh, wet mixing cycle uh dry ingredients mix more efficiently uh, than wet ingredients because wet particles do not move as freely as dry particles uh, therefore the time frame for adding liquid to the mix, uh, mixer should be given careful consideration uh, like uh, um, uh, it, this is a view of a uh, mixer uh, scheme uh, first there, uh, there is a batching grinding this is the mixer line after mixing this is pelleting and the bagging we'll discuss about this mixer line so in mixer line uh, these are the oil tanks at the top floor of the feed mill this is the batch bin above the mixer uh, this is the mixer this is the medicine hopper and this is the uh, service tank for the uh, oil if firstly the feed comes from the, this batch bin to the mixer we have to take care that firstly we have before the oil addition before the liquid addition we have to add the medicines and to give a dry mixing cycle of 2 to 3 minutes depending upon the mixer design always ask your supplier a machine supplier that what is the dry and wet mixing cycle of your mixer because if we add oils before the medicines uh, the pre mix may sticks to the wet spots of the oil and there may be not good free movement of the particles so we have to firstly we have to add the medicines into the mixer then after the dry mixing cycle we have to add the oil and the other liquids so this is very uh, important part we have and even uh we have to check in the automatic feed mills this interlocking sequence of dry and wet but we have to aware to the technicians and the feed mill operators in the manual projects where there is no automation uh they they should be that much aware that they have to add the medicines and after the dry cycle of 2 minutes we have to add the uh oil even i suggest the feed millers even in the manual as there are 30 to 40% manual feed mills in india uh, for from the 1500 uh, if if there is a 1500 feed mills uh, in india around 600 to 700 feed mills are semi automatic or manual so even in these manual feed mills with small investment we can add that interlocking scheme 
footer system siren system and the interlocking of the gates so that we can achieve a good mixing uh, premix practices even in the manual projects so we have to uh, take care of this uh, dry and wet mixing cycle and also to reduce the oil or liquid addition time we can uh, spray or uh, put the oil into the mixer forcefully with the help of the feed pumps uh, most of the feed mills there is a, the oil addition is by gravity and by gravity it takes some time to put into the to goes into the mixer so that time we can reduce with the help of a feed pump or the uh, pressurized forceful addition of the oil or liquid in the uh, mixer that enhances the mixing efficiency and reduces the ta uh, time required to add the oil or liquids into the mixer so that we have to take care of the dry and wet mixing cycle then there is an interlocking scheme uh, in the feed mixing process uh, like uh, in most of the feed mills, we uh, got the feedback from the uh, feed millers or the managers that uh, if if a technician or operator uh, mistakenly uh, uh, for, uh, forgets to add the premix in a batch, and after three or four batches, he come to know he came to know that I. Uh, mistakenly um, uh, didn't put the medicine in the previous batch what he will do he will add two batches of the medicine in the next batch to complete the count because he knows my manager um, uh, provided me the 10 uh, bags of the medicines for the 10 batches if uh, uh, if, uh, if he uh, forgotten to uh, add the medicine in one batch then what he will do he will put two bags in the next batch to complete the count so what we have in this automation sequence if we add the medicine from that medicine hopper and there is still batch in the mixer uh, the time when jab, jab tak ye mixer ka batch search bin mein nahi jayega, for the next batch, uh, gate will not open to add the medicines again. And if if uh, agar isme batch ruka hua hai, to jab agar isme humne medicine dala, jab tak ye batch aage nahi jayega, dusri bar medicine dalne ke liye hi gate nahi kholega. Interlock pneumatically interlocked with the slide gate of the search bin. And agar ek bar medicine chala gaya, jab tak ye batch uh, is may underdose bhi nahi hoga, overdose bhi nahi hoga. So th that is the thing we uh, keep uh, in that interlocking sequence to avoid the under and the overdose. So this is very important uh, point in the feed mill process. Then uh, the other process is the barcode scanning. Uh, like uh, in this uh, barcode scanning, for example, we provided the uh, 10 batches, 10 premix for the pre starter, 10 for the starter, and 10 for the finisher to the feed mill operator or the technician. But how we can, how we come to know that uh, he puts the pre starter medicine in the pre starter batch? So, what we can do, we can add the barcodes over the uh, pre starter bags, starter bags, and the finisher bags, and we can save that barcodes coding in the PLC. If if the pre-starter recipe is running and uh, mistakenly uh, the technician grabs a starter bag and try to scan with the barcode scanner, medicine hopper, hopper will, will not open. Medicine hopper will only allow him to add the medicine if he picks the right bag with respect to the recipe. So that we can uh, check with the uh, cross contamination of the uh, different type of medicine in the field then uh, after this the next process is of uh, mixer cleaning uh, generally there is uh, 8 to 10 mm of gap in the ribbon and mixer drum when we are adding liquid medicines or the oil in the mixer the layer of a moist medicines and the feed particles 
keeps on depositing between the uh, ribbon and the drum and the clearance of 8 to 10 mm goes on reducing with the time so uh, and also these residue material in the mixer uh, obstruct the mixing process as uh, the turbulence and the flow and the movement of the material with uh, reduce uh, due to the uh, that uh, residue of the material so we have to uh, take care of the mixer cleaning process uh, to get to achieve maximum efficiency and the good mixing from the or pre mixer uh, then then we'll discuss uh, regarding the uh, machine technology in machine technology uh, this is the side view of a, a ribbon mixer and here we can see the a layer of the material between that 10 mm gap between the ribbon and the mixer we have to take care when we have to change the medicine from the pre-starter, starter or finisher. If there is any that type of medicine that is not suitable for the other um, recipe or the other formulation, we have to clean that leftover material from the service of the cleaning windows after the um, complete batch mixing. And uh, if we have to make other recipe um, premix, we have to clean this uh, leftover material from the mixer. Then you can see where, where the ribbon and the shaft connects. There is a corner like this. But we, can, we always check with the machine supplier or with our mixer that we have to avoid these dead corners. We can fill it with the um, um, uh, welded material. We can fill this gap and make them a uh, finished surface to, uh, to uh, avoid the dead corners and the uh, dead spots in the mixer uh, that may uh, obstruct in the mixing process uh, during the premix manufacturing. This is a very important part, uh, the pockets at the discharge. This is a uh, side view of a um, slide gate uh, below the mixer from where we discharge all the material during the bagging. You can see where, where the slide gates and the outlet, like this is the outlet from this is the in, in, inner view of from the top of the mixer. If, if there is a pocket at the discharge, uh, as the mixer rotates from, ribbon rotates from this part to this part, this pocket will obstruct the layer near that uh, pocket will be in very less movement with respect to the other material. So we have to check the machine uh, for these pockets, for these dead corners, so, so that we can have a homogeneous mixing in the complete batch. Uh, then this is uh, the view of a medicine hopper above the mixer. Generally, the medicine hopper is in only single gate. We have a one gate at the top top of the medicine hopper but what happens when the mixer is running there is a back pressure of the air from the mixer ribbon and the the nature of the air that uh, escapes from the uh, open open areas so when the time the operator or the supervisor is putting the medicines into that medicine hopper the back pressure air from the mixer obstruct in the process and there may be 5 to 10 percent of maybe 2 percent 3 percent depends upon the pressure and the um, uh, um, angle of putting the material there may be wastage of the medicines into the air or maybe spillage of the medicine near the medicine hopper so what we have to check medicine hopper must be equipped with the double gates one gate at the top and other gate at the bottom. When we have to put the medicines into the medicine hopper, this gate is in closed position so that no air comes from the bottom of the mixer. 
when he complete is completes the charging of the medicine hopper we have to close this gate and we have to open this even we can have a pneumatic slide gate or we can have a rack and pinion gate we have to open this gate and all the medicine goes to the mixer with minimum spillage and the minimum wastage uh, this this is the um, brief discussion of the machines uh, in the manual dosing and uh, in auto dosing in the big feed mills if we want to avoid this manual dosing because uh, this is all man oriented labor oriented work that how is putting into the medicine hopper and how is uh, going to the feed mill we can have a uh, auto premix dosing system like this like this this is a um, uh, auto premix dosing system we can have a two uh, premix bins at the top floor of the um, feed mill we can charge this with the different premix uh, complete premix and as per the formulation and as per the recipe requirement all these um, premix goes to this uh, load cell based way hopper and this way hopper uh, as per the command from the plc uh, guides the premix directly to the mixer automatically uh, maintaining the dry and wet cycle automatically maintaining 0.25% weighing tolerances and uh, totally this is automatic plc control system with the reporting system so uh, this is a brief uh, discussion uh, regarding uh, the premix practices that uh, we may use we may practice to enhance the um, uh, uh, feed uh, premix performance in the feed uh, so thanks a lot uh, to all uh, audience and uh, if there is any questions uh, we can discuss yes uh, thank you very much mr harjot singh sir and if there are any questions uh, in mind, dear participants, you can please put it in chat box or you may simply unmute your microphone and put your question. I want to ask about uh, the timing of mixing. How to decide the timing of mixing and the timing of, will the timing of mixing will change depending upon the recent depending upon the recipe uh thank you sir thanks uh, for the, that question uh, sir the timing of the mixer uh, firstly depends upon uh, the uh, one is the mixer design for example uh, if if i assuming a uh, single recipe for the all mixers uh, the timing for the double ribbon screw mixer will around four to five minutes the timing for the double shot pedal mixer is around two to three minutes and there are conventional vertical mixers humne uh, dekhe both both uh, bottle type uh, vertical mixers bahut purane zamane mein hote the ji 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 the timing of those mixers is around 25 to 30 minutes yes yes that, that totally depends upon the mixer design and uh, फिर उसमें अलग अलग आ जाते हैं सर द पार्टिकल साइज द वेरिएशन द डेंसिटी इन फ्यू केसेस वी ऑब्जर्व अगर एक बहुत ज्यादा वेरिएशन है डेंसिटी में एंड एक मिक्सर में हम बहुत ज्यादा मिक्सिंग टाइम दे रहे हैं देन ड्यू टू द ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्सेस एंड द डेंसिटी सेपरेशन एक लेवल के बाद हमको कुछ डी मिक्सिंग भी ऑब्जर्व हुआ सो दैट दैट टोटली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द मिक्सर डिजाइन एंड द पार्टिकल साइज एंड द मिनिमम टू मैक्सिमम रेंज ऑफ द इंग्रेडिएंट्स सो फॉर एग्जांपल अगर हमको सिर्फ डीसीपी एलएसपी और माइक्रो इंग्रेडिएंट्स मिक्स करने हैं दैट इज मोर देन 100 किलो 100 ग्राम 100 किलोग्राम्स डोज इन वन टन उसको दो मिनट में भी वो मिक्स हो जाएंगे बट देर आर ट्रेस मिनरल्स 40 ग्राम 30 ग्राम प्रेजेंट इन दैट डोज फॉर दैट वी हैव टू इंक्रीज द मिक्सिंग टाइम सो दैट वी कैन अचीव मैक्सिमम रिजल्ट एंड वी कैन गेट द मिनिमम सी बी सर दैट दैट टोटली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द मिक्सर डिजाइन ऑल्सो एक कंपनी का डबल रिबन मिक्सर का टाइम अलग होगा दूसरा कंपनी का डबल रिबन मिक्सर का डिजाइन अलग होगा बिकॉज द ऑफ द रिबन द आरपीएम दे फॉलो 
कुछ सम वर्क्स एट द थर्टी आरपीएम सम वर्क्स एट इवन फोर्टी और फोर्टी फाइव आरपीएम फिर द टर्बुलेंस ऑफ द मटेरियल मटेरियल कैसे इन और आउट फ्लो कर रहा है कितना विड्स का पिच कितना हमने कितने फर्म्स हमने दिए हैं कितने पिच दिए हैं सो वो टोटली सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द डिजाइन एंड द डिफरेंस इन द मशीन सो उसको फिक्स करना बहुत मुश्किल है भी अगर रिबन मिक्सर है उसको चार मिनट फिक्स करना बहुत मुश्किल है दैट टोटली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द मिक्सर डिजाइन एंड द इंग्रेडिएंट्स बिहेवियर सो आई थिंक इन दैट केस इन दैट केस लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन माई केस i make five kind of mash feed yes sir for me the timing of the mixing will be different for all type of feed uh, sir sir uh, we can uh, check uh, what humne apna apna factory mein kya kiya humne different types of feed li aur unhe different time diya 2 minute 3 minute 4 minute 5 minute 6 minute and छे के छह सैंपल्स को हमने सीबी टेस्ट किया जी जी द ओनली द ओनली प्रोसेस टू चेक द मिक्सिंग एफिशिएंसी एट डिफरेंट मिनट्स एंड डिफरेंट फीड बिहेवियर हमको आपको 10 15 20 सैंपलिंग लेकर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइम्स पर और डिफरेंट डिफरेंट फॉर्मूलेशंस पर वी हैव टू चेक द सीबी सर दैट दैट इज द ओनली मेथड वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई द मिक्सिंग टाइम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ग्रेन्स actually that is what we have given, we have like you know initially what we do we do this kind of practice every year because yes, wear and tear happens in all the uh, all the mixer exactly, and sir, also yes, the and and also the what you call uh, the raw material also quality also keeps changing raw yes, material uh, what you call that uh, uh, number of raw material number of raw material their density also particle changing. size moisture So basically we basically what we do we only check the salt contained in those 20 samples that uh, salt sir. content tells salt contents tells us the cv because yes, we sir. know what is our salt content in formulation and what is our salt content in the feed that we somehow have to correlate because itna minutely uske upar jana like you know for a small uh, farmer like you know yes, it is very sir, difficult sir we can we can arrange a visit at your place and uh, the micro tracer kit is very small we can carry with us and we can yeah, yeah, yeah. mic with yes. micro tracer micro tracer it is 100% accuracy will come yes yeah, yes yeah. i have also seen a micro tracer with a emblem of pfizer on oh, each yes. and every micro tracer yes sir i mean that micro tracer if you see in that uh, what you call that uh, oh, microscope you will yes, come sir. to know the pfizer emblem on each and every that tra micro tracer okay. i think okay, it sir. was having 6000 particle per gram yes sir that was to that was given to avoid the what you call that brand image like for yes, example sir. if you are selling bicasul capsule yes sir like if you are selling like for example if any feed miller very big feed and very very big feed miller if they want to like you know avoid some duplicating by somebody else so they can yes, add sir. micro tracer in their feed and they can check the micro tracer with they all they all they also give you some kind of magnet which gets attracted to those micro tracer and yes, when sir. you see the micro tracer usme wo uska aapka emblem bhi nazar aa jayega that's yes, something yes, fantastic but yes, i think but I, do you do you recommend to use vfd in place of uh, your क्या उसको बोलते हैं आई मीन इज दट वी एफ डी इज फार बेटर देन यूजिंग यूर नॉर्मल दट फ्रीक्वेंसी ड्राइव या 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 वेरिएबल फ्रीक्वेंसी ड्राइव डू यू रिकमेंड टू यूज वी एफ डी इन कंपेयर टू अवर इन ग्राइंडर इन ग्राइंडर Yes, yes. In in hammer mill, actually, sir, VFD has a very good role uh, to achieve a particle size as per the requirement. For example, yes. uh, for a pellet feed, the broiler uh, feed, the tip speed of the hammer mill we require uh, very on a on a high um, tip speed we requires for the broiler. So, if we have to produce from, for example, at uh, uh, someone having a 10 ton per hour. Uh, um, 
broiler feed mill the motor of hp of the hammer mill is around 150 and the rpm is of hammer mill is around 2800 rpm because in uh, mm -hmm. broilers we require grinding at 3 mm or 2.8 mm screen with a particle size uh, less than uh, 900 microns more than of the 80% of the average uh, and <coughs> yes but yes if, yes if we want to produce mash or breeder feed from the same hammer mill even mm. if we use a coarse screen for example 6 or 7 mm screen at that uh, higher tip speed hammer mill we we will get 20, uh, 15 to 25% of fine dust of below 300 microns that is not suitable maybe for more breeding. than that maybe more than that yes yes exactly maybe 25 28% that is not suitable for the breeder mesh or the layers yes so yes, what yes, we yes. do in that case instead of putting a separate hammer mill or smaller hammer mill instead of investing more on machine we uh, uh, reduces the rpm of the hammer mill from 2800 to 1800 or 1700 no that you can do it even to what you call the 1837 also yes i mean it to that micro level it you can go yes. so by reducing the uh, rpm with the help of the bft we can reduce the tip speed and uh, we can even even the even at 1200 rpm or 1400 rpm hammer mill is uh, is not able to uh, prevent the 100% dust you can reduce yes, the yes, dust yes. from 25 28 to 5 7 10 12% uh, with the yes, help of the vft vft is a very good application uh, in uh, hammer mill uh, that we can use with respect to the grains and all other i things. think only with the help of vft you can control the particle size yes sir, uh, otherwise exactly, normal sir. normal to feed mill hai jiska rpm to jo motor decide karti hai ya maximum fully decide karke aap usko kam zyada kar sakte ho unless exactly, you know sir. what rpm you require but like for example now when i am making five feed if i need five rpm for the for the particle size yes. i don't I, i i i will not invest five machine instead of that exactly. 70000 rupaye ki ek vfd yes. laga do and then every starter and pre starter just change your what about that rpm speed and you can have the same uh, like you know you can have different different particle exactly. size from the same feed mill with the same uh, vfd Uh, and also sir in feed mills uh, we suggest feed mill uh, at hammer mill feed, uh, uh, vfd at hammer mill and vfd yes. at hammer mill feeder that controls the feeding with respect to the load on the motor uh, okay. and th then vfd at uh, uh, crumbler feeder then vfd at the very important at blower that reduces uh, the power consumption and helps to cool the uh, feed with respect to the season and the moisture content uh, because okay. in blower there is only damper setting for the cooling but with the help of the vfd we can uh, change the impeller rpm and uh, get the desired suction with respect to the uh, moisture content of the feed so we have four to five applications uh, of machines of the vfd Uh, so actually say, actually i was trying to share like you know, i will share one of my exp uh, experiment we just did last month i will share yes, with sir. everyone who is who is participating here and uh, and the same question i asked can is there is any practice to to reduce that black particles of like you know black corn uh, which is full of aflatoxin corn in our maize in spite of buying a good quality of uh, maize in spite of having Uh, what you call that uh, so vibrating sieve, but still that what you call that vibrating sieves, ka jo kam hai, it is only the foreign particles nikalna, like whatever less than this and less than that karke nikalna, ya more than that karke nikalna, uska sirf yehi kam banta hai. Usme hamara foreign particles kam ho jata hai. Usme definitely around 1.7 percent tak hamara particle size bahar, matlab waste foreign material nikal jata hai, but energy and other nutritive value increases by more than 3% that's a different issue mm. but what we did was what we did was we we attached to one uh, additional table uh, which is in a slanting mode from that sieving machine from that vibrating sieve to the uh, to the inlet of grinder where we employed three people to like you know to pick and choose to pick and choose let it be 70% and 80% let it be 60% only those black particles manually i am just talking about manually we did this trial and the uh, 
after the whatever that trials were conducted, uh, the aflatoxin level in uh, not sorted uh, feed was more than 50 ppb, and in sorted it was 11 ppb. Uh, uh, sir, actually, we are in discuss in discussion with the, one of the uh, color sorting machines supplier. Yes, because yes, yes, for yes. the for the big uh, feed millers and the conveyors having the conveying capacity of 30 to 35 metric ton per hour, uh, manually we can have a trial and we can get the results. And this this is very good feedback from your from your side, sir. But uh, in uh, big feed millers and the big volume of the grain. We have to deploy the um, automatic machines, and we are. What could be the cost of those machines? Exactly, sir. We we are in discussion, and uh, we are working over that because we have to check the feasibility of that machines too. Because um, uh, they are mainly used in the rice mills to. I know. I have the... seen it. I have seen it in Karnal. Yes, yes. So, so we are working over the feasibility of those machines in the feed mills, and uh, with respect to the benefit and uh, the investment. For the return over investment, uh, then uh, we can uh, have a brief discussion that uh, uh, whether they are viable to uh, put those machines in the feed mill or we have to um, check with some other process. Uh, yes, sir. actually, it is 100% viable. Actually, uh, let it be very honest. Maybe a few years back, we did not know the we did not know the damages done by the aflatoxin uh, to our chicken. To what extent? Now every damage is quantified and rupeefied. When I say rupeefied, uski rupees me or dollar me, uski value nikal lehi gai hai. Because of that, now it is viable to buy any machinery because that machinery will have a one-time expenses. But at that one-time expenses, let it cost maybe 20 rupees per ton or 30 rupees per ton or 70 rupees per ton. But we will ultimately we we will what you call that save lot of money in our what you call that broiler feeding cost our fcr will automatically come down by uh, introducing the mycotoxins of ppb level is reduced to a like very larger extent um, Thank you for the valuable feedback, sir. We, I, I, after getting the feedback from uh, those uh, machine suppliers, uh, we'll discuss in detail, sir, that uh, sure, whether, sure. what is, will be the possibility, sir. I must okay. thank you for your such a valuable, uh, what, uh, yeah, like, you know, valuable details and all the information given, as I have also written in the chat box. I mean, it, it is still an eye opener in spite of doing poultry farming for last 40 years and having feed meal for last maybe 30 years. It is still like, you know, we still have to learn so many things from our, from our young generation. Thank you. Thank you. And keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arzot Singh, sir. And thank you very much, uh, Umkar Singh, sir. Uh, we are actually very blessed to have participants like you. Uh, and like uh, the other participants like Dr. Tobin Singh, uh, Bharat Gautam sir, is because of your interaction and because of your questions, we are learning many practical things in poultry nutrition, which, which were beyond, beyond the, uh, our imagination. Thank you very much for such Actually, doctor, actually doctor, I, I, I will, re I will uh, like, you know, if you, if you go and see the, the what, what uh, lectures you have kept for those, Six days. I am very, like, in a very honestly. I mean, uh, let me be very honest. I am still, I am still sitting in a boxer and a banyan to see your show because I got up a little late. I didn't get time to go to, like, you know, to have my bath. And because it is Zoom, I can sit in whatever manner I. But I am. I have been following this for last three days, and I am following it continuously for all whatever six, seven hours. I am. I am really. You are putting the great work, like, you know, giving this kind of. Uh, uh, what you call that lectures and I'm so thankful to the speakers. They are sharing their so much of information to us like, you know, I'm so thankful to that. But I will, sh I will also share one more thing. Uh, having knowledge of feed formulation and everything, this is all bound to be there. Without this, you cannot work. But I think there should be some more sessions on how to do profitable poultry farming, not only poultry farming. You may be having all the infrastructures, you may be having 
all the what you call that best and best very good performance but are you making money in your business yeah that's because what i you. what i hear from my nepal friends i mean they are also in a deep shit troubles i mean no return on yeah. investment and every year they are making losses so i think some some part should be faced on those aspects also how to do profitable poultry farm thank you thank you very much for your feedback uh, we will try to uh, accommodate uh, your views or maybe we can organize some other program maybe we can discuss with you experience uh, people like you and design some other beautiful program to discuss on the issues raised by you thank you very much thank you very much uh, mr harjot singh sir actually i want to beg an apology with uh, harjot singh sir because there was a little um, uh, 16 years timing of, of the talk uh, and um, unfortunately um, it was a mistake on my part that the communication did not um, i could not do it was my pleasure sir to be part of your presentation uh, and um, tomorrow we are going to have a talk on three topics the three topics will be uh, feed hygiene and feed sanitation program the first topic will be delivered by dr vikas puri he has been associated with uh, uh, global feeds maybe you know sir harjot uh, singh sir global feed yes sir. Uh, global feed yeah i i think uh, the machinery are installed by the lark company yes sir right yeah and uh, again harjot singh sir, sir will be delivering on feed mill design and the entire processing mm, uh, and lastly uh, from force india himanshu saxena saxena will be delivering on nir technology for precise nutrition today dr bosle talked a little bit about nir um, uh, technology so he will be dealing in detail about the nir technology and how we can use the nir technology for precision nutrition in poultry and any other livestock thank you thank you very much for your generosity and valuable time uh, most importantly thank you for being available for us on such a short notice uh, thank you for all the insightful talk and thank you all the participants for your passion um, and for your enthusiasm um, and overwhelming questions and interest we look forward to cooperating with you in future as well to disseminate the knowledge information um, Your expertise uh, for the benefit of global poultry industry, livestock industry, and feed industry. Thank you very much. Tomorrow we will be back same time. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. We sharing the PPT if I am not wrong. Sure. Whatever we get uh, get from uh, the speakers. Yeah, yeah. No, because have... because because the uh, uh, because the topics are so interesting. It is just yeah, not possible I, I, to listen and I, make notes of those things. Yeah, I I have your uh, email address. If anybody please who haven't um, dropped, uh, or maybe you who haven't uh, registered with their original email ID, they can simply drop your email ID, or maybe in social media you can drop me your email ID. Whatever yes. speaker uh, share with us, we will without any hesitation share with you. Uh, I've been following the uh, speakers. Uh, uh, I'm so I'm uh, sorry to say that yesterday's first speaker, uh, Rajista, he has not allowed us to do any recording and any sharing of his information. Uh, the professor from the University of Hawaii. So we will not be. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never because, mind. Never mind. Because we sh we should respect what. Uh, I understand. No, no, hundred percent like correct. But not an issue. And and. Uh, CJ Bio America Dr Roshan Adhikari's presentation so he, he said that he is going to make approval from the company and after the approval he will share with us and i have been following all the speakers some have uh, already uh, sent their presentation some are still to send so as soon as i get from the all the speakers because uh, it will be easier for us all uh, it can because it can be done in a single mail we will definitely share the material with you thank you Thank you, thank, you, thank you very much thank you thank you thank you see you tomorrow yes sure